Hello and welcome to vlog number 75. This week I'm going to talk about the theory that Parkinson's disease starts in the gut. This theory has been very much in the spotlight over the last couple of years or so, but James Parkinson reported in 1817 that the number of patients that he was studying suffered with constipation, and further, in one of the cases, treating the gastrointestinal complaints seemed to alleviate the movement-related problems of the condition. Indeed, constipation is a very common symptom of PD, with approximately 50% of patients being affected, and this very often precedes the onset of movement-related symptoms. Research on PD has, however, been focused on the brain, initially on the death of dopamine-producing neurons and, subsequently, on the presence of toxic clumps of alpha-synuclein protein, which misfolds and accumulates within the brain, and, it is hypothesised, play a role in the death of those dopamine producing neurons. In 2003, a team led by neuroanatomist Heiko Brach at the University of Ulm in Germany proposed that Parkinson's may actually start in the gut, not the brain. This theory was based upon the observation that post-mortem samples from Parkinson's patients showed the clumps of characteristically misfolded alpha-synuclein protein in both the brain and the gastrointestinal nervous system that controls the functioning of the gut. A research team at the Californian Institute of Technology studied mice that had been genetically modified to overproduce alpha-synuclein fibres. The mice were split into two groups, one of which was raised in a sterile environment the other raised in a non-sterile environment. The mice that were raised in a sterile environment showed less alpha-synuclein in the brain and suffered fewer motor symptoms. The mice in the non-sterile environment developed Parkinson's symptoms as expected. Antibiotics given to the non-sterile group reduced these symptoms, suggesting that something in their microbiome was enhancing symptoms. The team then injected gut bacteria taken from human PD patients into the mice that were raised in the sterile environment. These mice showed a rapid deterioration in Parkinson's symptoms. Bacteria taken from healthy subjects did not have the same effect. Analysis of the gut microbiome could identify bacteria that are peculiar to people with Parkinson's and lead to screening for PD before the onset of symptoms and damage to the brain occurs. It could also result in new treatments. Other research, published in 2017, looked at people who had ulcers and underwent surgery to remove the base of the vagus nerve, which connects the gut to the brainstem. This research established that these patients had a 40% lower risk of developing PD compared to those who didn't have their vagus nerve removed, also suggesting that it originates in the gut. The challenge that remains is to discover the means by which the alpha-synuclein protein travels from the gut to the brain, and there is ongoing research in this field. Dr. Roger Little, Professor of Medicine at Duke University in North Carolina, is senior author of a paper published in 2017. Little's team have discovered endocrine cells in the lining of the small intestine, which produce hormones but which also contain neurotransmitters and other proteins normally found in neurons. These cells appear to branch out to communicate in a similar way to neurons. When placed near neurons, these cells behave very much like neurons. The endocrine cells move towards the neurons and fibres sprouted between the cells, connecting them. Little's team has shown that the endocrine cells contain alpha-synuclein. They now need to establish that these same endocrine cells in people with Parkinson's carry the malformed version of the protein. If they can establish that, then they should be able to envisage how the misfolded proteins associated with PD could spread from the gut lining to the brain, perhaps via the vagus nerve. Previous research has shown that exposure to certain pesticides and bacteria can give rise to a susceptibility to Parkinson's. Little's team say that it's possible that these agents may affect these endocrine cells, altering the structure of the alpha-synuclein protein within them, but evidently more research in this area is required. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.